Hello everyone and welcome back. So this is another episode of Deconstructing Kelly Brogan. For those who are not very caught up, because uh, I've gotten a lot of subscribers since I did the last ones, there is a woman named Kelly Brogan and she is a peddler of crazy pseudoscience. And not that long ago, she was on the Joe Rogan podcast. And as always happens, anytime you have Kelly on anything, it's full of absolute wing nuttery. Just some crazy, crazy shit. So... We're slowly but surely going through everything that she says, and once we're done with the Joe Rogan podcast, I'm going to show you some, some really, really sketchy stuff that she's done on the side of this. But that's probably going to be a few videos from now. Now, if you haven't seen the first two of these videos, I'd suggest you go back, you watch those before you watch this one, but otherwise, sit back, relax, and enjoy. In the New England Journal of Medicine, recently, there was a case report, right? 37-year-old woman who was so psychotic that her family took out a restraining order on her. Okay, oh. paranoid, delusional, totally psychotic. She was treated with Risperdal and Zoloft, an antipsychotic and an antidepressant, which did nothing. A year of this nonsense later. Nonsense. You're calling taking an antipsychotic and an anti-anxiety nonsense? There are a lot of people that rely on those medications to be stable. She was finally diagnosed with gluten sensitivity. Okay, so wheat sensitivity, right? <sighs> You know, we just started this episode. We just started this episode, and already I, I want to I wanna drink. They put her on a three... This is in the hospital. This is not like in some quacks office, you know, in, in Boulder. So, so in three months on this strict gluten-free diet, she was totally normal again. Wow. Now, usually I would say citation needed, but I took the liberty and I looked it up. I looked it up, and actually it's on Kelly Brogan's own website where she talks about this case study and she has a link to the study itself. Now, here's the problem. When you actually go to the New England Journal of Medicine website, you can find the basic beginnings of it, but the actual study itself is behind a paywall and I don't have access to that, so we have very limited information to go on. However, Check this out. Examination of a 37-year-old woman with adult onset psychosis revealed weight loss, a thyroid nodule, anemia, and micronutrient deficiencies. Diagnostic tests were performed. Now, what does that actually mean? Does that mean that, well, in fact, her gluten allergy was the thing that was causing her psychosis? Uh, no, there's nothing here that I can unpack that makes any sense for that whatsoever. Is it impossible? Uh, not necessarily, but here's the issue. Here's the issue. It's not necessarily that this could or could not be the case. It's what Kelly does with this. In her article, she has a section talking about this case study saying, psychiatric medication, worse than nothing. The time lost to identify the root cause of this 37-year-old's patient illness, which could be characterized as autoimmune alone rather than autoimmune and psychiatric, resulted in almost a year of exposure to an ineffective antipsychotic medication. No harm in that, right? Wrong. And then she links to this uh, long and thoughtful discussion with an investigative journalist, which you can put, I could be an investigative journalist for fuck's sake, trying to, to basically disparage using psychiatric medication. Now again, and I've made this very clear, I am no fan, no fan of the pharmaceutical industry, nor am I a fan of the industry behind psychiatric medication. I've had my own problems with that in the past, I'm not a big proponent of it. But you can't really throw everything out just because of one simple basic study. There are people that can only, only manage their, their lives by these psychotropic medicines. That's as simple as that. So this reductive, just arbitrarily, fuck all those medicines, that's dog shit. Don't even get me started on the whole gluten shit, all right? Just, mm. Theory, right? Have you ever had anybody that you put on this diet and they didn't respond and they stayed psychotic or whatever here's, their issue was? Here's why not in a long time. Not in a long time, huh? That's... Not a no. And just a little bit of backstory on this too. Uh, this is referencing back to this crazy, crazy diet that she was talking about back in, I think it was my episode two of this debunking, where you have to change your diet and squirt a bunch of coffee up your ass to basically cure anything, cancer. Because I screen for readiness, right? So I screen for mindset. You know, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if she said I screen for thetan levels, honestly. That's, that's pretty much what I read this as. And, and that's what we were talking about earlier. Because if you're ready and you believe that you're like a whole radical next chapter of your life is like forthcoming, 
then I don't, I'm just part of the ritual. Ritual. I don't know about you, but when somebody starts using words like ritual when they're talking about my mental and physical health, it instills a whole lot of confidence. Gotta say, whew. You know? Mm. And it's like using the placebo effect even. I don't know. I mean, I'm very interested well, it's not in really science. a placebo, right? But it is a belief. The, the, if you don't believe that this is going to do anything for you and you're a skeptic, it won't. Do you, do you hear the derision in her voice? Play that again. You're a skeptic? Wow. Wow. But it's, it, it's not going to work, huh, Kelly? Uh, wh why, why is it that it's not going to work? Right. Uh, it won't. It and won't. I can show you all the science in the world, and it won't work for you. But the physiological changes of adjusting your diet, those are real, right? So, like, why but, won't it But help your you? beliefs can even override that. Whoa. Really? Really? That's interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, there is something to be said of mind over matter or the placebo effect and that sort of thing, but that's not what she's talking about. She's hiding what she's talking about with uh, funny fucking language. So that it sounds like something that could be believable, attributed to a known phenomenon that we utilize in medicine, which is the placebo effect. No, no, no. See, what she's actually talking about is, well, are you pre-brainwashed? Are you? Are you pre-brainwashed into believing that this random person who wants you to squirt coffee up your ass is somehow going to make a wild, lifelong change in you? D are, are you pre-brainwashed? Because if you are, let me tell you, I got some good fucking news. All you have to do is believe that it will work. And somehow, somehow, through the power of magic, your pancreatic cancer is going to be fixed by squirting coffee up your ass, doing yoga, and changing your diet. Not fucking necessarily. Again, and I've had to make this caveat a few times, and I'll continue to make it, and I'm, I'm comfortable with it. If you change your diet and you do exercise, you are obviously, obviously going to be healthier and in a better situation, a better position to fight whatever it is that's wrong with you. That's just basic understanding and basic science. But when you take that and you lump that in as the accessory to the thing that you're saying you need people to do, Especially when you then, like she's talking about with the Gonzalez protocol, and happened a lot of times where people forego traditional cancer treatments, you're not doing yourself any fucking favors. This is, this is ridiculous. Conventional medicine is interested in this to some extent now, noticing that what people believe, like that you'll lose less blood in surgery if you visualize losing less blood in surgery, that that actually happens. How can you control the physiologic activity of your body? But you can. Okay, so check this out. There is actually case studies where people in controlled environments have shown that through concentration and practice, they can effectively change their body temperature, change their metabolism. But it's not something that anybody can do. These are really rare individuals that can pull this off. As well, through, well, relaxation, you can lower your blood pressure. And if your blood pressure is lowered, you're gonna spurt less. Yeah, that's, that's just true. I think of your body's cardiovascular system as basically a a pressurized pumping mechanism that cycles blood through your body. That's what it's for. If you can slow down that pressure, if you can slow down how much buildup it is, yeah, of course, of course you control your blood loss. But who the fuck is going into surgery? It's very, there's only specific instances in surgery where you're awake and you're trying to control that. Otherwise, there is a way that we can control the, the blood pressure through surgery. It's usually administered by an anesthesiologist and it's done for very specific reasons in controlled, highly calculated uh, scenarios when you're going under the fucking knife. This is, this is not something that most doctors are gonna be relying on you to, to have trained in the ancient yogic arts of body manipulation. No, they're going to use drugs, medication. Like, <laughs> why is this a selling point? Why is this something that you're focusing on, Kelly? Like, it just... Uh, That's really? why I was saying, like, we have they software. They can prove that? It's a, it's a, it's a study on PubMed. Wow. Yeah. It's a study on PubMed. I can find a lot of stupid studies on PubMed. Yeah, so yeah. how do they convince them that they're going to lose less blood? They, med they visualize it. They meditate on it, visualize losing less blood. You what know? if you have one group, you say, dude, you're going to spray like a <laughs> fountain. 
You look like a broken fire hydrant. You're going to just be You're gushing all over the yeah. table. You're going to be a sprinkler. You're right. You should conduct this study. That would be fascinating to see if the nocebo effect would have. It probably would. Yeah, that's 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 a good idea. Let, let's uh, let's suggest that Joe Rogan should go out of his way, uh, take time off from his podcast and his successful stand up career to instead go do a study. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a good. That's very clever, Kelly. That's the oh, fuck fuck off. They probably would. Uh, yeah, I would imagine there's probably a way you could mind fuck someone into some no terrible question. state, right? Kind of like uh, convincing a terminal cancer patient that they need to squirt coffee up their ass. Yeah, I think you could probably, you could probably do that. Yeah, I think that's possible. That so you know where we see this is in cancer diagnosis. It's called medical hexing. That you know when you are diagnosed with cancer, your risk, of, your you know the completion of suicide, but also other accidents, and your health basically declines simply because of the diagnosis and that's why it's considered to be it's like bone pointing or something just wait for it so it's voodoo it's what we've always known that like someone could put a hex on you and if you know that a hex is on you you're like god damn there's a goddamn hex on me that's right and you start believing it that's right and then it could really cause a huge issue i that's what i has become clear to me is real and we don't want to think about it that way because we think medicine is science. Oh, here we go. And it's, you know, this, you know, sort of impenetrable, you know, the hallowed halls of truth. But it's a religion, just like anything else. In fact, Nick Gonzalez, my mentor, said it's the last really unrecognized religion on the planet is medicine. Oh, one more time for those in the back. It's the last really unrecognized religion on the planet is medicine. Science is a religion. Really, it's a religion. You see, last time I checked, religions do not allow for the questioning of their beliefs. Not usually. In fact, that's one of the reasons why it took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fucking years for any type of reformation to be done in damn near any fucking religion whatsoever. Kind of like how, I don't know, we're dealing with today. Yet, for some strange reason, science is changing constantly. We're changing our opinions on things, we're getting new data, we re-examine those beliefs, and then we move from there. That's usually how it works. That makes it pretty much antithetical to the dogmatic practices of religion. Instead, the only reason why you would say this, Kelly, is to try and disparage science as something that people don't necessarily have to trust. And why would you do that? Probably because you want them to trust you. Yeah, like those poor saps who actually followed Nate Gonzalez's protocol, took themselves off chemotherapy, and died horrible agonizing deaths far sooner than their counterparts. Maybe. But then again, when it really comes down to it, suffering underneath religion is kind of uh, tried and true. So if anybody between the actual established biomedical industry and you and your wingnut full of shit beliefs is anything near religion, well, that'd be you. I find the very concept of this extremely insulting and massively fucking irritating because trying to to throw everything under the bus, all of science under the bus, just because you want to hawk whatever bullshit quackery you have going on is so unbelievably arrogant. This, this is evil. All right, well, that's going to be it for Deconstructing Kelly Brogan episode three. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave me a comment, like this video, all that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Don't worry, there's a lot more crazy shit coming up. Trust me. Fuck. Bye.